Yeah, let's go there. So, so what's the difference between this array parallelism and this parallel that we're going to be talking about? And the difference is that like in array jobs, like all of these jobs were independent. So this is called embarrassingly parallel, like when, but they were all running still with the, with only one CPU, but, but it was, they're still running in parallel. The queue would just manage the parallelism. Mm. Uh, but for some situations, you, you actually want to use multiple CPUs or multiple processors to do the actual calculation, to speed up the calculation. Uh, this is especially popular in physics and stuff like that, where you have a big models that mm. you need to do but in any fields r really uh, if the if the software just supports it mm -hmm. yeah and there are several different strategies to, strategies to do this and really i mean any of these strategies are not specific to high performance computing they can be done on your own computer like you can use mpi or open mp on your own laptop. NumPy uses OpenMP for any calculations it may do. But the cluster is designed to make this easier and let it scale to even larger things than before. Mm -hmm. So should we um, look at... Probably explain the, the main features of this kind of, like, or main uh, types of parallelism. Yeah. So, so there's basically like, like, Besides the embarrassingly parallel one that we already uh, have experience with the array job, there is this so-called shared memory parallelism, uh, where and uh, where like each of the processes are in the same physical machine. So we were talking about like trying to find these kind of analogies uh, with Richard <laughs> uh, during the break. What how would we describe them? And the analysis got pretty wild sometimes. So, so, but the best one we probably managed to get was that, like, think of an office, like an office where there's people there uh, working with some like papers or something, and mm -hmm. everybody's doing their like you do a, like a collaborative, let's say, project, and and everybody's working on their own chapter, and they're working in the same office, and you can like give a, a bunch of paper to the person next to you just by handling handing them the papers mm -hmm. that's basically the situation with shared memory parallelism that the memory is the text that you're writing everybody's writing to the same like writing text into into documents and and they are in a shared room everybody's every worker every office uh, person is in the same room and they can just handle stuff hand stuff to each other uh, so, so basically, everybody's in the same place, and in, and in this case, it's like if if in reality we have the compute nodes, which are computers, and the computers had the CPUs in them, and this, and with the computer, there's also the RAM that we talked about, like the local memory uh, where mm -hmm. the programs are being run. The the processors and the RAM are limited by the actual like physical machine. It's like it's an actual machine, like a computer. Similar to, similarly to your laptop, it's an actual physical thing. And, and that's the limit of the machine. And, and in shared memory parallelism, you utilize multiple processors within the same machine. Uh, and that is uh, like const. Uh, like uh, this kind of parallelism is very popular nowadays. Uh, like uh, so, so Richard also me already mentioned OpenMP, which is this coding uh, style uh, for C and Fortran and, and these low-level languages that basically utilize, like you can you can code with this OpenMP to run multiple things at the same time, multiple calculations. Mm -hmm. But also you have like many uh, many like Python, uh, MATLAB are uh, they all have they either utilize low level libraries that can utilize that can do this uh, open like mp NumPy, stuff on the background so on. or the, you can like have these multi processing things going on where you have like multiple uh, python processes or mul like often in in some code that you're using you see a parameter called like number of workers or number mm -hmm. of jobs mm -hmm. or number of whatever and that usually just means how many processes you want to run this 
uh, like problem with yeah and and that is basically the thing like you can if those frameworks that you're using or these programs that you're using support running with multiple processors they can utilize multiple processors mm -hmm. okay but but they're still limited within that one machine like yeah. you still cannot like out of thin air you cannot create more cpu cores uh, just mm -hmm. by asking for them like you still are limited yeah. by the actual hardware of the system so i guess you're limited to several tens that you can get on a server these days yeah like something like i think 40 is the maximum in triton currently yeah uh, it's still a lot more than your computer might have like four or eight uh, or mm -hmm. something like that so it's a lot more but still yeah but but the main thing here is to also to recognize that uh that not everything works like that like not everything cannot can be parallelized so it needs to be supported by the code itself so so you need to have that num number of workers flag there or you need to have these mm -hmm. libraries mm -hmm. that can utilize the multiple yeah. processors or otherwise it doesn't like adding more more stuff to there doesn't doesn't help yeah. like adding adding more if you only have one uh, one kettle or uh, one pan um uh, like, where you want to like cook your pasta adding more yeah. stoves won't help basically like that's mm -hmm. the kind of a situation like if or you if you're telling the person if the person if you're telling the person to only use one pot giving it more pots isn't going to help anything yeah okay. which is actually yeah. and well do we talk about this later configuring the code maybe let's talk about mpi then we can talk yeah. about the difficulties yeah. of getting code to use it yeah so, so what's so the other parallelism uh like paradigm is this mpi or message passing interface programming there's other alternatives uh that use other things as well but the main thing and mpi is the most common one but the main thing is here is that there has to be like some external network that the people like the processors can discuss like across so, so basically, if you think about the office analogy, like you're in the office, you're working with your coworkers. Let's say you have another office that you need to work with in, in India. Like you have a, your, in your company has like another office in India and you need to discuss with them. You simply cannot give the documents to each other mm -hmm. by, by just reaching out to India. That's, that's like, impossible. Yeah. So like in your program, you have to have an explicit state of going and sending the communication. Yes, and and this message passing interface, like let's say in the office analogy, you send it send a request by email that hey, can I have a document? And they send you attachment uh, back. Mm -hmm. In the message passing interface, that handles that is a net like layer that handles all of this nasty network communication, so that you can transfer data from one processor to another across a network. So so in an HPC cluster, you usually have like a fast interconnected network on the background and the MPI handles all of these kinds of like discussions, like how do you, how do you want to do this networking and, and, uh, and these handshakes between all of these different processors so that you can have a communication across one, uh, across multiple computers. Yeah. Which is instantly what you, S run yeah. does. So if you're doing something with MPI, you would normally compile it so it knows about slurm and then when you put s run in your script it sort of magically handles all of this setup for the communication and then tells the program how to use it yes there's there's like layers upon layers of middleware like uh, this uh, <laughs> software in the middle so that the uh, like the data will go as fast as possible straight from one yeah. computer's memory to another computer's memory so yeah. so because otherwise there will be a lot of time like doing like handshaking and and lots of time wasted uh doing communication and like i want mm -hmm. to send you something and and the, the other person needs to respond the mpi like mpi and the other software it will like make it smoother so that you have like a direct direct communication channel so that you can like the programs can discuss with each other yeah and the difference here is that like uh like in this in this like user spec perspective 
like whether your program uh, supports either of these paradigms, uh, there are also these hybrid programs that support both of them, but that's another kind of worms. But if, if your program supports either MPI or this uh, shared memory parallelism, you need to look at the manual usually. Like if mm -hmm. it mentions MPI somewhere or yeah. something about, about networking and going across networks, then it probably might support like working yeah. with multiple computers, but usually vast majority of parallelism is shared memory parallelism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this point about reading the manual is quite important. Like sometimes someone will come to us and say, okay, this program should use multiple processors. How do I run it? Like, okay, well, let's see. And we look at the manual. In the worst case, the author of it doesn't say how it works or it's designed where it will try to detect how many processors are on the computer and use all of them. So you might run it in Slurm and say, okay, please run with two processors. It's like, okay, I am on a 40 core node. I'm gonna to try to use 40, except Slurm tells it it can only use two. And then it's actually a lot more inefficient that way. So like not all codes even are like smart enough to realize that it's running in Slurm and there's some limitation beyond try to use everything that's there because it was just designed for a desktop computer where, well, there's usually one thing running at a time. So yeah, that's what this big box is about, basically figuring out how it works. And if you can't figure it out, then you could do some tests yourself and see, or you can contact us and we will try to figure some things out yeah it's usually a good idea to do some like this kind of a uh a b testing or this kind of like testing that if you assume that the code understands how it's supposed to work uh but like mm -hmm. if you assume that the code works better with multiple processors if you increase the number of processors you expect the code to perform better like you mm -hmm. expect the time to run the code get shorter because there's more processes yeah. working there if this is not what happens uh, if the runtime if, if you use let's say sf or, or or slurm history to look at the the like what the code did if that doesn't match the expectation then mm -hmm. uh, you know that something is wrong either yeah. with the program or by the how the program is configured yeah so so, we... so basically oh. Uh, like uh, as an uh, analogy let's say the office like you're in the office working there and you need to work together you need to write a, write something with a computer and you only have one keyboard and everybody like switches places mm. has to switch place constantly to write their own stuff and then another person comes in and writes their own stuff with the same keyboard there's obviously going to be like a huge back like a huge bunch of people just waiting in the queue like if you have if you uh, like uh, if you're um, in in the kitchen and you only have the one pot where to cook the pasta but you have 10 chefs looking around it doesn't make it any faster that to add more workers uh, to the situation yeah. so so in these kinds of situations you need to uh, like look what like what uh, yeah, what what amount of processors actually are you requesting, and what amount of processors you are the code is assuming it's getting, and and this can be hard to decipher sometimes. And it, but but the best way of usually checking it is by looking at the time. Like, did it run faster? And if it did run faster with multiple processors, it probably used them in some form or fashion. Yeah. So, um, should we talk about the different ways of running things? So, if it's embarrassingly parallel, you would use array jobs that we already discussed. And really, these days, if you're not using some massive physics code, a lot of software uses array jobs plus shared memory on that node. So basically multiple processors on one node and then scale by using more tasks. Okay, so next.
if it's OpenMP or multi-threaded or multi-processing, how do we run this? So what we need to now tell to Slurm is that we want multiple processors for this uh, Slurm task that we're running. So Slurm, there's this, these kinds of like uh, different lingo inside Slurm about tasks and, mm -hmm. and CPUs per task and such, such mm -hmm. forth. But tasks are basically MPI tasks. So tasks in Slurm, Slurm's internal lingo means how many MPI workers you want. And if you don't have an MPI code, you always want one worker, like one task, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want to go above that. So so the default number is, is one. Yeah. And what you just want to do is to add more CPUs available to that one task. So using so, the so CPUs you, per task option. Yeah. So so if you ha have the CPUs per task equals to, let's say, four, you, you will get, get four CPUs for that. Mm -hmm process that that process will run with four cpus yeah and so so if your code doesn't have mpi in it you'd never want to modify the tasks parameter you just want mm -hmm. to uh, specify the cpus per task parameter okay and then we would specify then there's a question of yeah. some memory or i guess we can specify memory per cpu or a yeah, total so, amount so of memory yeah, so, Which... so some programs are these kinds of programs that, uh, like, basically, they, let's say, copy the data and then they do, they work in, like, they have some internal, like, job allocation inside them or something like that. So they might, by adding more CPUs, you might increase the memory requirement. Mm -hmm. In those situations, it's usually a good idea to make it so that, like, the, the CPU, the actual memory usage is, like, multiplied by the number of CPUs mm -hmm. you're using. So basically, if you add more CPUs, you add more memory requirement. Automatically, you don't have to like change both parameters from the Slurm strip when yeah. you do like uh, job submissions. Uh, okay. The other situation is that when the, it, there's no effect, the number of CPUs doesn't affect the memory usage. And in those cases, it's better to just like put a, like a flat memory limit uh, for the whole program and and then just add up the CPUs number. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. So here's an example of running an OpenMP program. And by this time, we are not, I guess we're not going into these details. So when you need to, um, yeah, like when you need to run something like this, you can go down and see. Yeah. This is like maybe, actually maybe compiling could, a... Uh, yeah, maybe we could quickly, program. like if I... If I quickly show the like the program so that we can focus on the actual in like important part, mm -hmm. which is the CPS per task. Okay. I can, uh, I can your screen. The... Your screen is shared now. Yeah. Yeah, I can run the example. So, like, you don't have to necessarily like if you're not compiling OpenMP code, uh, this is not probably relevant for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So. I'll actually make a new directory. Um, let's clear this up. So we have some uh, open MP code with something that can work in parallel. It doesn't like if you're not familiar with open MP, if you're not familiar with compiling, it doesn't matter. Like the main thing is that this is a program that can utilize multiple CPUs. Well, it doesn't do anything uh, anything interesting, but it can utilize multiple CPUs. So if I now run it with, let's say, S run, so interactive running, I will run it in the compute node, uh, some compute node, and I will give it the hello OMP program that I have. It will run there. And it says that, OK, hello from thread 0. And if I run it with CPUs per task equals 2, let's say. So now we are asking for two processors. The program itself understands that, OK, there's two processors available. 
and each should print hello world from thread uh, one and zero and thread one. <laughs> so, but the only thing like, or the only thing you need to think about if you have a pro program that can utilize multiple processors is to modify the CPs per task parameter. That is the only thing you need to worry about. The, from the Slurm side, the other side is you need to worry about whether your program can actually utilize the CPUs. But but from the Slurm side, you can just simply put this number there and it will get you there. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that did two things. Yeah. Okay. I'll also mention that sometimes uh, it's a good idea uh, to, like uh, you want in your code add some you want to uh, know how many CPUs ha you have reserved so Slurm will set this uh, Slurm CPUs per task parameter when you uh, when you run something with multiple CPUs so uh, you can use this environment variable to to get the number of CPUs while the code is running like how many CPUs you have reserved so that if your code requires you to tell it how many CPUs you want to use, you can use mm -hmm. that number. And it's always a good idea to ask, like if you're asking for, let's say four CPUs, to utilize four CPUs, not like eight or anything like that, because it will create these kinds of uh, competition uh, for the same resources within the code and it's not efficient. Okay. Okay, should we look at the MPI? Yeah, should I go back to my screen? Well, yeah, sure. I just did. So as we scroll down, okay, MPI. So what do you say that MPI, when you're getting to MPI, you're getting to serious business? Like, hmm, that's what- Well, everything like, is serious business, but <laughs> like, yeah. like then you're, I would say that you're going towards the traditional large scale HPC situation. Yeah. Like some, yeah, so so these kinds of like, I I think I yesterday or day before mentioned about this weather programming, for example, like weather forecast, like they need to have like a full, the simulation might need thousands of uh, processors to, mm -hmm. to run so that you can get the work, uh, forecast done for yeah. the next day. Like it needs to be done fast and the uh, simulation is usually really big. So you need to do it with multiple CPUs. So in these kinds of situations, or like when you have these kinds of, especially in physics, when you have these large scale simulations, uh, all kinds of simulations, mm -hmm. uh, you usually use this MPI to manage like a huge number of uh, computers. And this is especially important in let's say CSC, if you're, we are going mm -hmm. to hear about CSC resources more, but if you're going to be doing this kind of large scale uh, MPI, uh, HPC uh, kind of a thing, it's a good idea to, to use this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, hmm. and, and the main thing is that usually in MPI programs, you have things like, let's say you have a, like a simulation area, which is a cube and you split the cube into smaller cubes and each processor mm -hmm. handles its mm -hmm. own cube and then everybody like yeah. communicates next to its neighbors and then you calculate something inside the cube. So these kind of situations is usually handled by MPI programs. Yeah. So do you want to demonstrate the MPI program or should we go on straight to... Um, so I'd propose... I can, I can run the you MPI. You want to give a demonstration. Yeah, okay. demo. So you can, you can run this after the, after the course if you're... Uh, if you uh, want to want to use MPI, it's a good idea to test it out. Mm -hmm. So I will I will copy from this HPC examples this hello MPI program. So I have the program here and then I'll I'll use let's say usually when you're running MPI you need to use our MPI because like our MPI <clears throat> or cluster MPI is usually like 
like there's like I mentioned, there's a huge bunch of like middleware uh, that handles the communication with the networks, and the MPI needs to be able to handle those. So you usually have like a software installed by us admins that can handle uh, these kind of discussions, mm -hmm. because otherwise, uh, well, you won't get the performance that you want. Yeah. So then uh, we just compile this. And then we have a executable here. And now when we are running this, let's say we run it again interactively. <clears throat> if we run it like with simply S run, we run it with one processor. So it will say that hello world from processor mm -hmm. something out of something. And in MPI, it's called usually rank. Rank of the program is like, which is the ID of a single processor. But yeah, um, let's say we, we want to run it with, uh, let's say, uh, two tasks. Uh, so then we, so we didn't mention, but uh, so in, if you wanted to run shared memory programs, you had the CPUs per task and you had the number of tasks at one. Mm -hmm. If you want to run an MPI program, you want to have usually the CPUs per task at one but the number of tasks at a higher number. Mm -hmm. So you, that you specify with this end tasks option. So with two tasks, let's say you have a, a hello, <clears throat> you have two hellos from two processors uh, in that are running. Okay, so uh, there we running see, together. yeah, ranks zero and one. Okay. But so yeah, but with the MPI, I would quickly yeah. mention that like, if you want to run it, bigger you want to run more tasks you can either increase the task number but it's usually better to split the pro problem based on like well, how you how you're handling it inside uh, so that you have like certain am amount of tasks uh, mm -hmm. per node if you have a very large pro problem mm -hmm. so then you can do this n tasks per node and ask for let's say nodes mm. uh mm -hmm. two so now you have two nodes times two tasks or actually yeah. four processes running so basically there's all kinds of options for requesting mm. whatever you may need yeah and... but but like like i mentioned before if you're not using mpi do not use this because then <laughs> you will run simultaneously four copies of uh like the same program because it, mm -hmm. the Slurm will try to launch the program four times and that's not yeah. what you want. So here so, we see that two of the processors were in in one machine and two of them were in a different machine. Yeah. Should we quickly go to a monitoring performance and then see about maybe one exercise, then a break? Yes. So 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 about the uh, multiprocessing performance. So we Yesterday, Richard already talked about uh, SF, which will give you efficiency of a program. And you can use that on a job ID to get uh, the efficiency for any kinds of program with any kinds of resource requests. So here you see here that uh, for this previous program that run with two nodes on two CP, uh, two nodes on with two tasks each, uh, it had two nodes, two cores per node, and the CPU efficiency was 25%. So if you think about it, it's like two nodes times two tasks equals four CPUs. So 25% of hundred uh, four CPUs is one CPU. So it was actually running on one CPU. Like sometimes these calculations can get a bit muddied. I mean, so it's I guess easily... it's so small that maybe it doesn't measure it very accurately. Somehow. Yeah, most likely. But it, the most important thing is that to, if if this is close to hundred or not, like like if whatever you're running, if it's close to hundred or not, you at least you know that it's going to utilize the CPUs. Again, it doesn't tell you if you're utilizing them effectively. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you have the 10 office people uh, working with one keyboard. The keyboard might be like on fire because everybody's typing on it, but you get not that much done because like 
10 office people are writing at the at like everybody's writing one word at a time so it's not very efficient uh, mm-hmm. because you still lack you have a bottleneck in your system which is <laughs> lack of yeah. like available keyboards uh, but but you still get 100% efficiency uh, of the like the actual requests uh, requested resources that you have yeah so so okay. running so... at 100% might also mean that you are requesting too much so you should uh or you're, you're using too much resources when it, when yeah. you, with respect to the request that you have yeah so okay um it's at two o'clock or nine minutes when the laptops to Lumi CSC presentation presentation is scheduled. I guess that can be pushed back a little bit if needed. Uh, do you think it's even? I have a feeling that most of these exercises, except for maybe number one, can be done alone if someone wants to. Like we don't need to take time. Do you want yeah, to do so, ex- so... exercise or yeah, exercise one as a demo or type along? Uh, uh... Or yeah, maybe we could do it as a type along. So, so unfortunately, like we mentioned, many of these depend on the software very heavily. Mm-hmm. So in separate application pages in our documentation, there's examples mm-hmm. uh, of running multiprocessing on different like programs like mm-hmm. R, Python, MATLAB. Uh, there's also on other sites, of course, and also some MPI programs, the most common, that, at least those that we have installed and, and so forth. So you can use or run through them uh, based on what you actually need. Mm-hmm. But but basically, the main thing that you need to do is just remember that if you are, if, if you remember which type of a program you're running, mm-hmm. are you running an MPI program mm-hmm. or a shared memory program? Yeah. Uh, so so really, there's unfortunately not that good that good exercises that we could give that would. Uh, yeah like uh, fit everybody's needs but this mm-hmm. first exercise that we have here is is a really good and i i highly recommend you do it at the same time as as mm-hmm. uh, i do it right here because it will demonstrate how slurm thinks about these different uh parameters so in this exercise we have this um mm-hmm. or do you want to yeah uh, okay I, I have another idea well. what if we have a 10 minute break now we go to laptops to lumi and then we come back and we do the parallel exercise that sounds fun okay yeah so let's see we can have a break until mm, let's see four and then yeah okay yeah let's do that so remember you can continue um writing stuff or asking questions and we will see you afterwards okay see you later bye yeah